Have you watched the show Ultra Rich Asian Girls before on YouTube? It's a Canadian reality show about four young girls from wealthy families. But it turned out that three of them weren't wealthy people and lied about their family background. The case we're going to talk about today is one of the girls. Her name is Florence Zhao, born in China in 1987. My family and I moved to Canada when I was 14 years old. Uh, mes parents voulaient que je sois trilingue, donc nous sommes installés à Montréal pour que je puisse apprendre le français. In this show, she showed her luxurious bags and jewelry and invited other girls to her private island for vacation. Welcome to island. She also commented on a girl who lied about her family background. They probably would appreciate you more for, you know, if you're confident for who you really are instead of like trying to fool them all the time, to pretend to be someone you're not. But ironically, she isn't from a wealthy family either. The private island doesn't belong to her or her parents, but to her uncle, Yuan Gang. Yuan Gang supported the Zhao family for many years. Florence's money for studying abroad and purchasing luxury goods is all provided by Yuan Gang. She only used Yuan Gang's property to disguise herself as a rich girl in the show. In one episode, a girl happened to say this. Don't make me a murderer. Don't make me a murderer. But a murder truly happened here the following year, and the deceased was the uncle Yuan Gang who sponsored Florence. This case occurred in West Vancouver, where the crime rate is very low. Coupled with elements such as a billionaire and a dismembered body, this case attracted widespread attention back then. Let's have a look at this case together. In 2001, Florence's father, Zhao Li, who could barely speak English, took his family to Montreal and began their immigrant life. At first, everything went smoothly, and Zhao Li even bought a house there. But within a few years, he fell into a financial crisis, and the whole family felt very helpless. At this time, he contacted Yuan Gang, who was a lifesaver to his family. Yuan Gang was the cousin of Zhao Li's wife, Li Xiaomei. As Li Xiaomei is adopted, she and Yuan Gang are not related by blood and didn't contact much earlier. Yuan Gang was born in China in 1973. He was short-tempered and domineering since he was a child, but he was very smart and had a talent for doing business. When he was young, he started a coal mine business and had accumulated tens of millions of US dollars in assets by around 2005. At this time, he had the idea of emigrating to Canada and obtained permanent residence in Canada in 2007. At that time, Yuan Gang already bought 7,500 acres of land, an island worth $1.5 million, a villa worth $6 million, and a Tudor-style villa worth $13 million in Canada. Later, he bought a yacht, a Bentley, a Rolls-Royce, and several other luxury cars. Yuan Gang was often traveling between Canada and China, and his property in Canada was unattended. Therefore, he hired Zhao Li as his butler to help manage the property. Zhao Li accepted with pleasure. So in 2010, Zhao Li and his family moved from Montreal to Vancouver. Yuan Gang provided a house for Zhao Li's family to live in. This mansion has ten bedrooms, one sauna room, one swimming pool, and a lawn garden outside. Yuan Gang lived in another house. After coming to Canada, Yuan Gang engaged in real estate investment and farm business and founded an agricultural company. He assigned Zhao Li to work in the company and Li Xiaomei as his chef. His company had accumulated profits of about 50 million US dollars and Zhao Li and Li Xiaomei should be well paid. To avoid taxes, Yuan Gang registered one of the villas under the name of Zhao Li. He also bought a Bentley car for Zhao Li to use for his family, which was also registered under Zhao Li's name. Yuan Gang bore all the expenses incurred by the villa and car. Not only that, Yuan Gang also took care of the living expenses of Zhao Li's family, including Florence's study abroad expenses in Italy. In 2013, Yuan Gang lent Zhao Li Cad two million to invest in the stock, but Zhao Li lost 1.8 million. Up until Yuan Gang's death, Zhao Li hadn't been able to repay the debt. With the help of Yuan Gang, Zhao Li also lived a luxurious life. 
He then cultivated the same hobby as Yuan Gang, hunting. They often went hunting, fishing, and swimming together. Yuan Gang not only helped Zhao Li in his hour of need, but also provided his family with superior living conditions, until the day of the crime. On May 2, 2015, Yuan Gang went to Zhao Li's place to ask about Zhao Li's new invention, a gun rack used for hunting. Zhao Li had enthusiastically introduced his invention to Yuan Gang a few days earlier, and he felt that it could make big money. After looking at the gun rack, Yuan Gang thought it was good and suggested that they could jointly run a gun rack company. When it came to salary, Yuan Gang and Zhao Li had a conflict. Yuan said that this company could offer Zhao Li a salary of $4,000 per month. Zhao was somewhat surprised, as he was thinking of having one-third of the company's shares. Only $4,000? But this is my invention. Yuan Gang believed that this was a very simple invention that could easily be imitated by others, and even wondered if it would make money. At this time, Yuan said the shocking words, If you marry your daughter Florence to me, I will give you 50% of the shares. Zhao thought that Yuan Gang was joking, but he found that Yuan was only using a joking tone to express his true thoughts. Zhao Li said, This is impossible. You are her uncle. Yuan Gang thought it wasn't a big deal, as he and Li Xiaomei weren't blood-related. In Zhao Li's eyes, although Yuan Gang was wealthy and generous, he was by no means a good husband. Yuan Gang's personal life was very chaotic, which will be discussed later, and Florence is the apple of Zhao Li's eye, so he would never agree. Zhao immediately said that he didn't want the share, and then he scolded Yuan Gang. Yuan grabbed his collar, asked who he was talking to, and then punched Zhao Li's face several times. Zhao Li could only cover his face to avoid being hit. Zhao Li was five feet four tall and weighed 150 pounds. Yuan Gang was five feet 11 tall and weighed about 180 pounds. Yuan was much stronger and bigger than Zhao. Moreover, after eight years of relying on Yuan Gang, Zhao Li was subconsciously afraid of Yuan Gang. Zhao Li picked up the hammer that was lying by the flower bed and warned Yuan not to come over. He then ran to the garage. Yuan was furious and chased after him, taking the hammer away. At this point, Zhao Li remembered the rifle that had been used to display the gun rack earlier, so he ran back into the foyer and picked up the rifle. He pointed it at Yuan and said twice, Don't move! Yuan didn't believe he would dare to shoot. He laughed at him and said, You don't have the guts! In a mix of anger, panic, and other emotions, Zhao fired his first shot at Yuan. Yuan fell to the ground. Not sure if Yuan would stand up and fight back, Zhao Li approached and fired a second shot, which hit near the heart. Yuan stopped moving. A few minutes later, Zhao began to chop up the body. The above statements are all from Zhao Li's testimony provided to the police. Whether this is the true situation is unknown to us. At 11 p.m. on May 2nd, Li Xiaomei called 911. The police rushed to the house. Since they couldn't confirm whether Zhao Li was armed, they waited outside the house. At 3 a.m., the police heard the sound of Zhao using an electric saw to cut. At 4 a.m., he made a drink, turned off the kitchen lights, and went upstairs to sleep. At 6.27, Zhao Li woke up came to the kitchen again and cooked himself noodles for breakfast. The police had been calling his phone and they could even hear the ringtone inside the house. At 8 a.m. on May 3rd, Zhao Li answered the phone. The police asked him to step outside and he cooperated very well, then got arrested. The police entered the room for inspection and found 108 pieces of body parts. It wasn't until early 2020 that the case was concluded. Zhao Li was finally sentenced to ten years and six months in prison for manslaughter and insulting the human remains. With each day in custody counting as 1.5 days toward his sentence, Zhao Li was released from prison in May 2022. During the four years of the trial, another thing that attracted attention was the division of Yuan Gang's estate. Yuan Gang didn't leave a will, 
and he left tens of millions of dollars in assets after his death. He never married before, but he had sexual relations with hundreds of women. Many women wanted to share his heritage after he died. The police proved that at least nine women came to the court claiming to be Yuan Gang's wife. Even on the day of the funeral, there were three women and two children as wife and child of Yuan Gang, standing on both sides of the portrait and bowing to the mourners. Several women claimed that their children were Yuan Gang's. After conducting paternity tests on the seven children, the court determined that five of them were Yuan Gang's biological children. The police also found nude photos and sex tapes taken by Yuan Gang with different women on his PC, as well as a list of 68 women's names, ages and cities marked with numerical numbers. Upon inspection, the videos were all taken voluntarily. In addition to the five mothers of Yuan Gang's children, other relatives of Yuan Gang were also fighting for the inheritance. Surprisingly, Zhao Li was also listed among them. He believed that Yuan Gang's 47 farmlands in Saskatchewan should be given one-third to himself because he was the original joint venturer. At the same time, Yuan Gang's mother and younger brother were also fighting for the inheritance. But eventually, Yuan Gang's five children share the inheritance equally. Before the children become adults, their mother has the right to use the property. The day after Yuan Gang was killed, Li Xiaomei drove Yuan Gang's Bentley to the bank and stole two million Canadian dollars from Yuan Gang's account. She was later charged with criminal fraud. After the crime, Florence posted the following on Weibo, a Chinese social media, saying that it was a dark time in her life and hoped people could pray for them. On Christmas Day in 2015, seven months after her father's crime, Florence posted a photo of herself and her boyfriend celebrating Christmas on Instagram, which seemed like everything had already passed. However, due to the impact of this incident, Florence changed her English name to Mimi. In her current photos, she is wearing simple outfits and looks completely different from the wealthy Florence Zhao of those days.